All right. So continuing on those colors, we know what the vibrant saturation is. The next thing is your hue and saturation. Remember, you can access the individual pixels and change those colors. Or if you click on master and you play with the hue, it'll affect the whole thing in all kinds of fun, crazy ways. So that's that one. The next one is your color balance. When you click on that, it focuses on shadows, midtones, and highlights. It's kind of like the color grading in Lightroom. So if I want my shadows to be more red, and then I want them to be a little bit more green, making them kind of like a brown, and then I want to pull in some blue there to make them even darker, you have the ability to change what color your shadows are. Now, if you at some point decide, I hate all of this, you don't have to start over. If you don't like the color balance, I'm gonna delete that layer by clicking on that layer and then on my keyboard, clicking delete. So I'm gonna delete all of them and get back to just my levels because I was happy with what the levels looked like. Then the next one, black and white, don't worry about that. Then we have photo filter, it's kind of lame. All it does is put a wash over top of your image. So if you wanted it to look warmer, you click warming filter. If you want it to look cooler, you click cooling filter. It just makes it like more blue or brown or orange. So not something you need to do because if you play with all the other color filters, it's going to make those changes happen naturally through that. One thing I do think is kind of neat is the channel mixer and the color lookup. The channel mixer is very specific about your um, color changes but it's an overall kind of color change. So that's something to play with. You may not use that very often, again, because you've done all that other, um, I would say the hue and saturation and the color balance is where you're gonna get most of your color change. And then finally, color lookup is almost like presets. When you click on color lookup and then you go to, uh, you click the drop down. let's see, what does candlelight look like? All right, it kind of gave it a brown tone. What would edgy amber look like? It's very edgy and very amber. How about horror blue? Okay, kind of gives it like a cold look. What if I went to late sunset? Okay, so it kind of gives you like the filters that you might be used to on some of your, um, like I'll just say Instagram, you can have some of those filters. Um, so these are a couple of things whoops, that you can play with, um, but just be careful that you don't go too crazy with stuff. Um, not just yet anyway. Here in the beginning of photography, we're more about enhancement. We're not getting into manipulation just yet. That might be more a quarter three, quarter four situation. All right. So let's say that you have gone through and you've edited and you are happy with how everything looks. Yes, there is a whole nother row of adjustments. You don't necessarily need to worry about that right now if you don't want to. If you want to get into it, you can, but I think the big players, I just went over. So you're happy with this, you're good, you're ready to move on. My suggestion is always that you save your Photoshop files in two formats. One is a PSD, which is a Photoshop file, and one is a JPEG. There's pros and cons to both. If when you save as a Photoshop file, the good thing is it maintains your layers. So you can open up that file again and go back and manipulate these layers individually. The bad thing is you cannot open that file on any device that does not have Photoshop. So you can't open a PSD file on your cell phone or your Chromebook if you don't have Photoshop there. So that's the pro and the con. It's good when you are still working on something. So if I'm saying, you know what, I'm not done with this image, I wanna come back and edit it again, I'm gonna make sure I save it as a PSD file so that I can come back and work on it again. So I'll come to File, Save As, I'm gonna save it to, when it says Cloud Documents, guys, it does not mean Google Cloud. It means Adobe Cloud. You can or cannot save it there. That is completely up to you. I'm just gonna save it to my computer. Then I'm gonna change the name to 
whatever I need in order to remember. And here where it says save as type, I'm gonna keep it as Photoshop right now because I'm gonna continue to work on it again. And then I click save. And this pop-up is gonna come up and you're just gonna hit okay. Now let's say that you are done and I'm ready to turn this in. You can't save it as a PSD because Schoology may not be able to read it. I think they said that they fixed it so it can. Um, but let's say that I am re I'm grading on my cell phone, which I do sometimes if I'm like on a trip or I'm somewhere where I don't have my laptop and I need to see student work and I can't open it as a PSD on my cell phone. So what you're gonna need to do instead is you're going to come to File and then you're gonna Export. And you're gonna Export As. And a window should pop up, and a lot of it's going to look scary. Don't worry about it. Here on the right-hand side, instead of a PNG, you're going to save it as a JPG, which means it can be opened anywhere. The quality, you don't want good quality. You at least want excellent quality. Granted, that's going to make it a bigger photo file, but I don't care. If we're going to do this, let's do it right. And then you're going to not worry about all this hoopla, and then click Export. Where are you exporting it to? The same place I just saved the other one. You'll have to decide where it's gonna go. And there you go, and you're done. And you'll take that image and you'll submit it to Schoology and you will move on to the next. There is a lot more in Photoshop that I could show you. And the interesting thing about Photoshop is every one of us will start at point A, which is you have this open, raw, unedited file. Point B, is it being completely edited, done, you're happy with it. There are a million different ways to get from point A to point B. I will show you the ways that I think are easiest and that I'm most comfortable with. You might have a way that is completely different that you like that's better. Always share those things with me. I don't know everything that there is to know about Photoshop. I just don't. Um, I am open to learning new things like the export. I just learned that today. So that's new to me and I like it, so I'm gonna do that from now on. So whenever you figure out something new, if you think it's worth me knowing, it probably is, and I would love to hear about it, okay? So I am gonna go ahead and post these two videos to Schoology so that if you're anywhere else or even next class, you would like to access them and go through this tutorial again, it is there for you. And if there's something that it does not answer and you're still confused about anything, you can ask me in person.